Good. Okay. So first of all, thank you for so many people coming to listen. Um, that's this is a brilliant turnout for everybody to um, learn about feeding your donkeys. Um, I'm sure many of you uh, have donkeys or maybe interested in in um, getting donkeys. So that's all. This is really good to have so many people. So I'm just going to introduce myself first of all. Um, I'm Anna Welch and I'm the Veterinary Nutrition Director at Top Spec. Um, I started off in graduating in 2008, I think it was, from Liverpool Vet School. And I worked in practice, initially in mixed practice, moving into then purely equine practice. But then I um, started working for Top Spec and have been with Top Spec for seven years now. So um, I've been doing purely the, the feed side of things for, for quite some time. Um, we do quite a lot of work at Top Spec um, with the Donkey Sanctuary and um, have done quite a few of these sort of presentations um, about feeding donkeys. Um, but I look forward to lots of different questions from you all um, and we can monitor the chat. Um, we'll do most of the questions at the end is probably the best way to do it. And I've got a colleague called Lizzie who's going to be um, reading out everybody's questions at the end. So um, I'm going to talk a bit about um, how donkeys have evolved. It, it gives us a good background, I think, to, to understanding how they should be fed. Okay. So um, donkeys have evolved in quite sort of arid and mountainous regions. So we can see from the picture at the top there, and at the bottom, there's not an awful lot of green to be seen anywhere. So um, that makes it quite difficult to manage donkeys really in this country because they're not really designed to be having an awful lot that's green. Um, but it, so it gives us a really good kind of insight into what we, we should be doing with, with feeding and how careful we need to be when we are managing donkeys in this country. So they spend an awful lot of their time moving um, and browsing for food. So 14 to 18 hours a day, they would be browsing with a bit of sort of grazing. But whilst doing that, they're going to be covering vast distances. So about 20 to 30 kilometers a day. So um, really quite a lot of exercise. And it's worth bearing that in mind when we're looking at keeping them at home with us in how we're, we're managing them potentially in smaller areas when we're trying to restrict their grazing access. Now, the sorts of um, plants that they would be eating, I think you can see quite well from the sort of top picture, the they're quite highly fibrous, but low quality um, forage sources, not really like the sort of hay and haylage that, that's um, available, quite easily available to us and is generally fed to horses. Um, so I think this is all really important to, to think about when we're looking at what, what to feed. So this is a digestive tract of a horse um, and Donkeys are very different to horses. They're not just small horses, but the um, sort of anatomy of their digestive system is very similar in that we've got the esophagus going down into quite a small stomach and then the small intestine where we've got the majority of digestion as far as sort of breakdown of protein, fats and the simple carbohydrates. And then we've got a large intestine where the, the fiber that they eat is fermented and that fermentation process is continual. So fiber should be going through the digestive system all the time and then is fermented in that large intestine. So the hindgut or the large intestine is very important um, and donkeys actually are more efficient with their digestive system than horses and this is one really important difference. Um, they, it can, it's potentially a reason why they can look a little bit different in their shape as well, um, with a, a more of a sort of um, pendulous sort of abdomen and, a, and an angular frame, perhaps it's thought because of their greater kind of gut fill compared to horses. 
But their hind gut and where that fermentation of the fiber is occurring is just a more efficient process than in horses. Even native ponies that can be really very good doers, donkeys can just get much more out of the forage that they eat compared to them. It's important to know that of that different sort of body shape, as I'm sure you all will, um, having own donkeys, that they are more angular. When we're looking at sort of body condition scoring and assessing how they're looking, they are, it's quite a different to when we're looking at horses and ponies. They are very prone to becoming overweight and um, developing issues with how their insulin works. So insulin dysregulation and EMS, which you may have heard of, um, which means that their risk of laminitis is, is quite high as well. And so that's something that we're always having to bear in mind, particularly when keeping them in this country. Their sort of natural intake of, of um, feed, and most of that's going to be forage, is about 1.3 to 1.8% of their body weight. And that's a little bit lower than the average would be for horses. So they tend to eat a bit less, but get more from it because they've got such an efficient digestive system. It's really important that we do sort of satisfy their appetite, even though we've got to be really careful that we're not oversupplying calories because overly restricting them and not giving enough fiber um, to keep the digestive system healthy leads to problems. So behavioral issues for a start, but also problems like gastric ulcers and, and colic. So we've got to be careful when, although we've got to manage calorie intake, we've got to still maintain digestive health. So we'll talk about how we do that um, throughout the presentation. So um, I think one of the main things that we talk about lots and lots of donkeys is the use of straw. And um, this is because it's um, very high fiber, but low calorie or, or energy. Calorie and energy is the same thing. And low NSC or non-structural carbohydrate. So non-structural carbohydrates are basically sugar and starch. And these are all things that um, the sort of diet that donkeys would have naturally will be so high fiber, low calorie and low sugar and starch. And so that's what we're trying to mimic with how we're, we're feeding them. They also have quite a natural drive for more sort of indigestible fiber compared to horses and, and ponies. So actually, if we don't provide them with enough indigestible fiber, they'll just find it themselves and you'll find um, stables destroyed, um, post and rail fencing all stripped. And um, so we'll talk about ways to sort of manage that, but providing straw can be really very helpful because we've got that high level of indigestible fiber. Now with horses and ponies, we would never dream of supplying ad lib straw, so straw being their only forage source. Whereas for the majority of healthy donkeys, it's ideal to feed straw um, as their sole forage source. So it can satisfy their sort of natural appetite, but without oversupplying calories. It's important though, when we're basing any diet on something that's sort of so high in fiber um, that they're able to chew effectively. So regular dental checks is very important from this point of view and, and um, many others as well. Um, but definitely if we're basing a diet on straw, we've got to make sure that they can chew it effectively. We can get products like the Top Chop Zero here, which are chopped straw products. And when we start to get, I'll talk a bit more later about dental issues, um, but these can be used for a period of time to potentially replace longer fibre straw, or even if you're not able to source good hygienic quality straw. It is important that the straw is good and hygienic um, and not mouldy because um, we can get problems with um, respiratory and, and other issues from consuming mouldy forage. 
Um, there's different types of straw. Um, I think the ones that we tend to recommend for donkeys would be barley and oat straw. Um, wheat can be used, um, but is not often as preferred because it's not as good as a, as a bedding. It's a bit more sort of coarse and highly fibrous. Um, we'd only tend to use it in younger donkeys where we're in no doubt of um, that their teeth are functioning well. So um, in most cases, we're gonna need to source what we can get really, because in, in a lot of cases we find that we're, we've not got the luxury of picking and choosing um, what we can, can get. So when hay is used, so most healthy donkeys with good teeth, no sort of illness, um, they're not growing, they're not pregnant, they're not lactating, will need ad lib straw. But hay, which is sort of your next step up, it's a bit more nutritious than, than the straw. And the nutrition that's in it is going to depend on the type of grass and when it was cut in the year. So really with donkeys, when we do need to use hay, we want to look for a source that is as low in sugar and starch and high in fibre as possible. Because even when we look for that, it, it's still going to be more nutritious than straw. So a late cut high which means it would should be higher fiber and lower sugar hay is going to be our best choice and usually a meadow hay so when when might we we need to use hay so potentially in the winter so if we've got a donkey that has ad lib straw most of the year round but maybe is dropping a bit too much condition We'll talk about hard feeds later, but before we changed anything from the hard feed point of view, I would replace a portion of their straw with hay, because that's going to make sure that we're still promoting them chewing regularly, frequently, still their sort of grazing activity for um, up to 18 hours a day, but we're just giving them a bit more in the way of calories from that forage. Not all donkeys will need to move to having any hay in the winter. And um, I'll talk about specifics with um, managing for weight loss and weight gain. We'll do some particular sort of examples later on. So you'll see where it comes in. I think more often where we're going to end up using hay is where we have got um, pregnancy. Um, we've got... Um, producing milk or if we've got a growing youngster and we'll talk about um, youngsters later on as well. So how much are we going to introduce? That depends a little bit on how they're looking and how much extra condition we're needing. Usually if we were just doing a winter change to make sure we don't drop too much weight it would probably only be about 25 percent hay and the rest straw. Um, but we can go to about 50-50 or in some cases totally hay, but that's usually going to be more those with issues, I think, where they're more prone to that sort of weight loss um, because we are going to end up factoring some grass usually into this. So um, we'll find that most donkeys, most healthy donkeys have no hay at all all year round and, and could just have a straw based diet. We don't use haylage. I've got a picture um, here with some wrapped. Um, we very rarely would use haylage for donkeys. There's not many situations other than perhaps if they were being really fussy and we were trying to sort of tempt them by mixing some in with hay, but it would be very rare that we would do that really. Um, with pregnancy, it, the sort of high demand stages would be the last kind of um, trimester sort of three to four months and then the first three months of lactation and usually we would give ad lib hay there so they wouldn't necessarily need any straw. I think for most donkeys though I, even when they've got high demand just a little bit of straw availability gives them a bit of help from the point of view of that extra indigestible fibre and it can help to save your fences. So Grazing, grazing's the difficult bit because we know that in an ideal world, they wouldn't really have any. Um, 
they can afford to have a little bit more if they're not becoming overweight but the majority of of donkeys are so prone to becoming overweight we've got to be very careful so restricting grazing is really important um we clearly need to avoid sort of lush green pasture and there's different ways of doing that. So we can strip graze, um, rotate small paddocks, maybe have um, a horse that can eat more grass or sheep um, on the field um, before uh, the donkeys follow on or sheep potentially alongside. Um, providing a yard or sort of dry lot turnout for a, a, a large proportion of the day is a really good option. So basically we can, we can offer straw and they haven't got grass availability. Um, that can also be helpful in, in these kind of conditions where it's just been wet for so long um, because donkeys have um, hold a lot of moisture in their feet. Uh, I suppose that comes from their background of evolving in very arid conditions um, to try and avoid their feet drying out too much. They absorb more water than a horse or pony would. So that does mean that they're more prone to problems with their feet kept in wet conditions. So um, that's the opposite end of the scale, the sort of winter management compared to when we've got the issues with lots of green grass about. Even when we are relying on grass as their for restricted grazing as their forage source, for example, say during the day and then they're coming onto a yard or, or dry lot overnight, I would still allow access to straw. And um, grass doesn't have very much in the way of the sort of fiber that is in straw. Um, and so, donkeys will seek that and um, you can see in this picture here just in the background lovely um, post and rail fencing and we want to keep that that way and um, they will go and strip the fences themselves if we don't provide them with some straw even though you can look around the field and think that they've got lots of grass they do surprisingly considering it's not sweet at all want some straw. Now because donkeys don't spend lots of time grazing as such, they will spend quite a lot of their time browsing. It's important to try and sort of enrich their environment to allow them to express those kind of behaviours. So if we can, access to hedgerows and branches are, are excellent. It will um, help to sort of occupy them and satisfy their needs. Um, but offering branches, twigs or logs so they can strip those can be a sort of good option too. So if they're in a dry lot, we could offer something like in this photo here, even if we've not got um, lovely safe hedgerows that they can, can go and browse through. So there's lots that we can do to help to satisfy that need for sort of indigestible fibre and to keep them chewing. I've got a list here of a few of the sort of trees and shrubs that um, are safe for, for donkeys to sort of browse or, or strip or chew on. Um, but there's a lot that we've got to be careful of. Um, probably a reference to go back to and um, there's a lot of information on the Donkey Sanctuary website. Um, so I think it's quite good to refer back to these kind of lists in in written form if you're ever unsure or just need to check up something that you've got um, in the field or or surrounding areas or if you can source safe um, logs uh, that, that you can put in either their dry lot or their field for them to strip you're going to want to just double check that it's suitable before popping that in there so then We've thought about what we're going to give them forage wise. We know that we need to be careful and, and um, limit the kind of highly nutritious forage. So um, the grass needs to be limited and we need to give large amounts of straw. But then what are we going to do for what else do we need to do now? It's important that we do balance the diet for vitamins, minerals and trace elements. Now, um, surprisingly, in the sort of 
browse that they would naturally find in their arid conditions, donkeys would get quite high levels of vitamins, minerals and trace elements. And they travel over such large distances, they would naturally have access to so such a range of the different vitamins, minerals and trace elements, whereas they're from limited grazing in a small area, they're really not going to get much. And conserved forage like the straw and hay is really going to contribute very little to um, their micronutrient supply. The protein requirements of a healthy donkey is actually very low. Um, straw is very low protein, which is why it, it's ideal. So we don't need to be looking at um, feeds that are higher in protein, um, potentially some horse feeds can be higher in protein and they're not the type of products that we need to be looking at. Um, we know that donkeys are not really designed or sort of evolved to have higher sugar and starch diets and cereal grains are quite poorly tolerated with an increased risk of laminitis and potential for sort of digestive upsets. Um, so we're looking for anything we want to use, we want it to be low sugar and starch. Now, you can um, get uh, mineral licks, um, but intake is very variable for those. Uh, donkeys don't sort of self-select for the majority of micronutrients. They can self-select to some degree for salt. And so providing access to a salt lick would be recommended. Um, but generally, that's the only type of lick that I would um, offer. Uh, our other micronutrients, we need to make sure that we know that they're getting a recommended level. Whereas if we're relying on use of a lick, it can be quite intermittent. You might get certain donkeys in a group using it more. They might use it more on one day than, an, than another, and you might get others that never use it. Um, so other than a salt lick, I really wouldn't rely on licks to meet their requirements. So then we're looking at what are we going, what can we feed, what sort of options have we got? So um, we produce a balancer called the Top Spec Donkey Forage Balancer, and that was produced in um, conjunction with the Donkey Sanctuary. And actually a pound made from every sack does still go to the Donkey Sanctuary, and we continue to work very closely with them. Um, and this is a pelleted product with a very low feeding rate. So you only need to feed 100 grams per 100 kilos ideal body weight per day. So for an average sort of donkey weighing maybe about um, 180 sort of kilos, we would give 180 grams. Um, 175 would be the easiest way to measure it on, on a cup. So it's a very low feeding rate, a small amount, and it's very low calorie. So we're going to get very limited contribution to the daily um, calorie intake. So we can make sure that the forage dominates their diet still. It gives them the vitamins, minerals needed to balance the diet and some support for their digestive system with a hoof supplement as well. So without any of the extras that they're really not, the majority of healthy donkeys um, don't need sort of extra protein and, and calories. Now that could actually be fed on its own, um, but often we'll mix it with a chop. Uh, that can just increase chewing time, slow them down a bit if they're if they're a bit greedy. But it can it can just be fed on its own, a small sort of pellet. And equally, it could be soaked if if preferred. Now I um, looked at a few other options to be able to um, sort of talk about what else is available. Um, there's limited options really for donkeys and I think a lot of people end up speaking to will will use horse feed um, but I think it's quite important to to know that a lot of horse feed is going to oversupply calories particularly compound feed where um, we've got feeding rates that are really quite high. Now um, we've got uh, the molly chaff product which is sort of a chop based product 
Um, and it's, what you want to look at um, is the different feeding rates of these sort of products when you're looking at what you might use. Um, Saracen do a donkey diet. And then when I looked on the Denji website, they recommend using a combination of a low calorie chop with a vitamin and mineral supplement. So there's different um, options available. I think the things you want to look out for are a low feeding rate. So we've got low calories but with um, vitamins and minerals to balance the diet. Now what else might we be able to to give them? Now the key is that we don't want to give too many extra sort of treats um, because the more we give of extra luxuries the more tight we're going to need to be with um, our forage provision and it's really important that they get enough forage to keep the digestive system healthy. So um, the sort of safe snacks but um, would need to still be limited quantities um, are things like carrots, apples, bananas, pears, turnips and swede. We'll talk about a few of these when we talk about donkeys that have maybe gone off food a little bit later on um, then there's a few things there that you would certainly want to avoid um, and then also sort of mouldy which is sort of touched on looking at the straw but that would be the same with any sort of hard feed or or extras we want to make sure that it's all good quality as far as um, sort of hygiene is concerned We've got to be careful, as I say, I'm going to just keep um, reiterating this with any extras that we add that we're not supplying too many extra calories or too much extra sugar. But things like carrots, um, they're quite high water content. So a carrot is about 80 percent water and um, a lot of what's left is sugar. So they're relatively high in sugar. But um, if you needed something for a bit of bonding or training or to search, um, to give them some sort of stimulation, the odd carrot um, is not necessarily going to be a disaster because it's such a high water content, but we certainly do need to limit a lot of these extras. So all of that leads on quite nicely to how we're going to manage an overweight or obese donkey, because generally with most healthy donkeys, we're trying really hard to do that anyway. We're trying really hard to sort of avoid this situation anyway. So we are keeping things very restricted. So restricted grazing is really important or even no grazing and, and sort of dry lot or sort of yard turnout. I'll, I'll, I'll say this so many times through the presentation, but it's so difficult to manage grazing for donkeys um, and I really understand the difficulties that owners have um, because it's just anything green is almost too much so you've got to think that they've got their um, sort of recommended level of calories and above that means they're going to put weight on and grass already takes us very close to that and we've just not got much left for any extra forage so we've got to be very careful with the grass access. We would still provide ad lib straw and um, that's going to be up to about 1.8 percent of body weight if you remember their sort of natural intake and um, it's rare that we need to restrict the the amount of straw to try and control weight really it's more likely that we're gonna need to avoid grass access but still maintain the access to straw and even if they do have grass access as I said before we need to make sure that they do still have access to straw which has, is higher in the sort of indigestible type fibre. We then need to balance that diet for um, micronutrients and it's important that the product we use is low calorie and has a low feeding rate so we're not sort of increasing their calorie intake. Exercise is really important as well, although we're not going to be able to do this if we've got active laminitis. So you're going to need to follow your vet's advice as to when and if you, you can exercise. Um, but if we've got a, a sound donkey, then exercise is going to be really beneficial. So it's not only mentally, but for helping with insulin sensitivity and um, helping with using up calories and, and getting achieving the weight loss. 
we can encourage some exercise just with working for food. I think I would always be thinking when we're offering any food, even if it's the straw, that they're having to do something for that. So feeding in different locations, even if we're putting straw out in the field, we can put it in multiple piles, which if we have multiple donkeys, we will do that anyway and make sure we've always got an extra pile for the number in the group but actually for them to be moving to different locations can be really helpful just to um, encourage uh, movement and it prolongs the availability of that forage as well when they spend more time moving between piles and um, if they're in or on a sort of dry lot there are various kind of stable toys that you can get to encourage them to um, be moving around. Um, snack balls are a possibility to be careful what we put in them and that we're not adding lots of higher calorie um, options into their regime. And we could put something like the balancer in a, in a ball as long as we knew they were getting the recommended amount. Um, I think often because they're kept in groups or at least pairs, we, we wouldn't be able to guarantee that one was getting their recommended amount. So often that's we're not going to put that in, in a um, toy. Hiding chopped carrot, I already mentioned, that's an option if we're using very limited amounts just because it can encourage that movement and it may be that we need to restrict the grazing in a way that we've got a sort of track system so actually we're in the way that we're restricting the grass that's available we're encouraging movement so a track system we tend to sort of fence off a middle area of a field and then the donkeys are, are in the sort of edge in the sort of weather we're getting now unless you've got quite a expensive system sorted a track system doesn't really work because it's going to end up a track that's just a bog um, but in certain sort of situations a track can be quite helpful it's really, really important that we monitor these donkeys closely. Um, the donkey for the donkey um, sanctuary have body condition scoring um, charts available, which can be really helpful. Um, I did speak to a lovely lady the other day who'd done some research on a donkey weigh tape, and um, she's got a website that um, shows the sort of information to back up the use of those. And I think that's quite handy for just day to day monitoring to allow you to assess your progress. Um, and it's important to just keep getting your hands on and assessing the condition. It can be really easy to lose heart though, so I would try and um, seek help from um, just another pair of eyes, first of all, a friend. Um, do you remember those when we used to be able to see actual people? Um, if you can get, if you've got somebody on a yard or someone available that can have a look, or even someone who could look at some pictures, that can help. A vet who's maybe coming out to keep an eye on um, the weight loss program, or maybe they've got laminitis. Um, anyone that can help give an opinion that's not seeing them every day can be really helpful to, to the program that you've put in place. It's really important though, even if we've got a donkey that needs to lose lots of weight, that we don't starve them. Um, as well as the sort of ulcers and the hind gut issues that can develop and uh, problems like colic, the donkeys are very prone to, and particularly obese donkeys, a, a condition called hyperlipemia. And basically that's lipids in the blood, so fats in the blood. And so what happens when we starve a donkey is that they um, sort of draw on their fat reserves. It's like a, someone turning the tap on of this fat into the blood for them to then use that as their energy source. But they can't really turn that off and then their blood vessels get flooded with fat, which can then be deposited in vital organs and cause failure of those, for example, liver. Um, some of you may well have dealt with hyperlipemia and we'll touch on it again when we talk about um, sort of illness. Um, it, it's not uncommon, particularly with donkeys losing a partner, so their other of the pair when um, they get very stressed. But it's, it's an issue when we're managing those that are overweight too, so it's something we've got to bear in mind. 
So the, the opposite end of the scale, and I talk a lot about um, managing donkeys that are overweight, feeding them to avoid weight gain. It is quite uncommon that we've got those that are underweight, but that it does happen. So maybe because they're older or because of illness. Um, and so we'll obviously talk about um, what we do to manage them. So um, we can maybe offer these uh, donkeys a little bit more grass. We still don't want to be offering lots of say spring grass that's maybe high in sugar um, but it's going to depend on the situation I would say as to why they're underweight for example if they're old and they've maybe got Cushing's they're still going to be at risk of laminitis and so um, we, we may need to manage their grazing accordingly but um, if there's no real issue but they're needing extra weight gain we're going to maybe be allowed to um, be a bit more lax on how much grass we can offer. Generally, I would use plenty of hay, but with still a little bit of straw on offer, as I mentioned before, sort of in all cases, I would still offer a little bit of straw unless dental function is very poor, that we're going to risk an impaction or sort of choke from them trying to, to chew it. Um, I would always consider the hierarchy if we've got a group situation, because is the individual that's underweight being bullied and so not getting the food that they should be? And is that why they're underweight? So it's all part of looking into why there's a problem in the first place, really. Um, but if we've got a donkey that's underweight for whatever reason, it's important to make sure they are getting sufficient food. If they're underweight because their teeth aren't working very well, we're gonna need to replace the straw and even hay with a replacer and we'll come on to that I think in the next slide. We then can offer and although this is designed uh, for horses mainly a conditioning feed balancer can be really useful for donkeys so if they're needing more condition. So it's similar to the donkey forage balancer in the level of the vitamins and minerals and sort of digestive support, but it's got higher levels of protein and calories. So for those that are needing it, it's a really good option because it's still low sugar and starch. We're still not feeling low, the large amounts of feed um, and can maximize their forage intake, but we're giving them more in that small amount of feed. So it's more nutrient dense. So that can be a really good start. I would always address the underlying issues with a vet, whether there's sort of worm issues, dental issues, um, other health concerns, and those are potentially going to impact on what we do feed wise. Um, but that sort of gives you a bit of an overview. Again, like with an overweight donkey, we do want to monitor them very closely um, and it will depend on the cause because if we, we go too mad we might get a sort of rebound excessive amount of weight gain if we've corrected a, a, the issue and fed more we need to be very careful that they're then likely to do a lot better so I would always be sort of conservative with our feeding up if you like if we've had a clear issue that we've then rectified. So dental problems, it's worth sort of focusing on those a little bit. Um, and a, a little check that can be done is to look at the fiber lengths in the droppings. So if a donkey is chewing the straw and hey, if they're having it well, then most of the fibers in the droppings should be ground down to about one to two millimeters, um, at least less than a centimeter anyway. But so about 80% of the fibre should be ground down really short. You might see the odd long fibre, but just not many of them. And if you see lots of long fibres coming through, it can tell you that their teeth aren't grinding down that forage effectively. There's no other parts of the digestive system that affects those fibre lengths, just the teeth. And if those fibres are too long they're going they're sort of swallowed when they've not been chewed effectively they're going to come out the other end as long fibers and those normal sort of microflora in the hindgut that ferment the fiber can't ferment those fibers that are too long 
so that can affect condition and the health of their digestive system so it's worth looking out for um you could, it's a quick check that you can do when you're seeing some weight loss but it's something to monitor when you've got older donkeys and you're suspecting a decline in their dental function so initially we can use a shorter chop as i mentioned when we were talking about straw and um, because they can manage that a bit easier than the longer fibers so um, it's going to be a short period of time potentially that they'll manage on something like the top chop zero as their sort of straw and hay replacer generally grass is managed very well because it's a, a soft fiber and um, so we do potentially still need to be careful with the grazing intake but it will all depend on what else we're managing for example if they're older maybe cushings maybe still prone to laminitis so we've got to kind of watch out for the other elements now we're going to eventually need to move on to soaked fiber sources because those contain pre-ground fiber so the teeth aren't having to do any work then so it doesn't matter if the teeth are almost becoming smooth which in some cases they do when they're getting um, a lot older or even have no teeth left and, and just have gum and actually they can do quite well on um, hay replacers that contain pre-ground fiber so it maintains that fiber intake to keep the digestive system healthy but um, it's the teeth aren't having to do any work. So then we've got our sick donkeys. I mean, there's obviously all sorts of reasons why a donkey may be poorly. And one of the problems or difficulties really with donkeys and poorly donkeys is that usually the signs are just that they're dull. Almost no matter what's wrong with them, even laminitis where they're sore in their feet, they can just look dull. They don't necessarily show the typical sort of signs that a horse or pony does or a laminitic stance that you'd maybe see in a horse or pony. Usually they are just a bit dull. Um, so it's quite difficult to pinpoint what's going on with a donkey. Um, but if they're not eating, it's always an emergency situation um, and that's because as i mentioned before with the starvation um, they are very prone to hyperlipemia and that can have serious consequences it's important to watch out donkeys aren't silly at all and they can sham eat and i'm not sure if any of you heard that term before um, but basically they just pretend that they're eating and i think that perhaps comes from being uh, prey animal that even if i'm not okay i'm just gonna look okay so they will stick their head in a bucket they'll i've seen videos that they'll even look like they've taken a bite but clearly haven't and then start chewing but they've actually got nothing in their mouth so um that can be really deceiving and it can can be perceived that they are eating well when if you watch closely they're actually not so that's something to look out for um, if we've got sort of issues going on and, and a poorly donkey so there's different things that we can do to try and stimulate appetite so um there's lots of different tasty things for donkeys that are a bit more sugary that is going to tempt them and um, things like ginger biscuits go down very well with donkeys cereals and mixes polos molasses so these are gonna usually be a sure thing for encouraging a donkey because they do tend to have a bit of a sweet tooth i think what you're not allowed always tastes nicer really so if we need to use these in limited quantities to encourage them to eat the things that are better for them then that may be necessary at least to avoid the serious consequences of an issue like hyperlipemia um, on a more long-term basis uh, perhaps if we've got a donkey with Cushing's that's developed some appetite issues or um, all sorts of other reasons that could lead to long-term appetite issues we'll try and go for slightly more healthy options with sort of peppermint flavoring mint leaves ginger grated carrots apples bananas and um, even marmite goes down quite well 
we also do a product called Top Spec Digestive Aid, which is flavoured with peppermint oil and mint leaves. And it's got high levels of vitamin B12, as well as high levels of pre and probiotics in there. Um, and that can be quite a useful option for encouraging appetite if it's needed. If they're not eating straw and hay well, but teeth are OK, it may be that we need to use a hay replacer and a soaked hay replacer for periods of time just because they'll eat that better. And we can be happy that we're maintaining that fibre intake. And as they're feeling better in themselves, we would wean them back onto the sort of longer fibre. So a lot of this is going to depend on the reason that they're they're sick, but um, it's really important to ensure that we maintain um, their intake and don't end up with serious issues from hyperlipemia. Encouraging browsing can be really helpful. So it's surprising when you've got a donkey that's just refusing to eat anything, if you can either um, clip some um, some, take some cuttings from a safe hedge or even if they're able to take them for a walk to that hedge that once they're able to just express that natural behavior that they can suddenly start eating again so um, even when they're refusing everything else so that's a useful thing to try and encourage if they're not themselves. So young donkeys, young donkeys do have higher requirements because they're growing uh, the bones and the muscles are developing. So it is important that those extra requirements are met. It's going to depend on the situation and the quality of the grazing and the hay as to what we're going to need to do with the hard feed. So generally these sort of these donkeys are going to perhaps be able to have a bit more of the grass um, and um, ad lib hay to support that growth. It's going to give more calories, more protein. What we're going to balance that diet with is going to depend a little bit on the quality of the grazing and the hay that's available. So in most cases, I do recommend the comprehensive feed balancer, so the higher protein and calorie level, but still low sugar and starch. But in springtime, for example, if grass is very good and hay was very good, then for some youngsters, we would actually use the donkey forage balancer. So rather than having a sort of set rule as I use the comprehensive balancer up to X amount of years, I tend to judge on a case by case basis as to um, what's going to be available to them. Um, this, when I'm talking about young donkeys here, I'm obviously talking about once they've been weaned. Um, so again, it's still really important to just monitor closely. Um, they can still, young donkeys can still be prone to weight gain. And if we get that early on, and it can be a real issue to manage long term. So we have got to be careful that they don't put on too much weight. I think sometimes we can take our eye off the ball because we're thinking, well, they're young, they're growing, they can afford a bit extra. But, so we still do have to bear in mind that they could can go the other way. Um, the type, the sort of age that they mature will depend a little bit on their size. And um, on the whole, I tend to say about sort of two to three, probably sort of three years old. Um, but you'll find that smaller donkeys can potentially um, be more prone to weight gain as they're nearing sort of two or three because growth is is slowing down. So we we've just got to be careful that they don't put on too much. So um, in summary, uh, the main things to think about, although it's obviously different depending on the situation that we're managing, but on the whole, um, donkeys are going to need to be fed a highly fibrous forage with low sugar and starch levels. Now, in most cases, that's going to be ad lib straw. Grazing is really difficult to manage, and I do understand how difficult that can be. We've just got to bear in mind that they've not evolved to have anything green, we've got to be very careful with everything green. So restricting their grazing is, is really important. Only if it's needed for extra calories would we introduce some hay. And so usually that's gonna be in the winter and not needed when grass is gonna be better. 
quality, even when we're restricting the grazing, when the grass is better quality, they're still going to get more nutrition from it, even when you try your best to restrict what's available. We want to allow them to um, satisfy their need for their natural behaviours. So the browsing that they would usually be doing for nearly all of their day. We need to try and encourage that in, in our management systems. We need to balance that forage diet with micronutrients, but we don't need to supply lots of extra calories or protein other than in cases where we've um, got problems, um, illness uh, and they're underweight. And, and that's often, you know, that's quite rare, really. In more cases, we're needing to manage obesity or avoid excessive weight gain. So please feel free to put any of your questions. Oh, I can't see the chat box at the moment. I'm just going to stop sharing. Ah, so now I can see the chat box. So do keep um, popping your questions in the chat box and we'll go through some of those. We've got plenty of time because I do think we're going to have quite a few questions. Um, Carol, are we able to unmute Lizzie? Uh, yes, I think we might have several Lizzies. Let me find. <laughs> Let me find. Apologies while I scroll down and find some Lizzies. Lizzie Blavins, is that the is that the Lizzie we're on? Yes. Now? Yeah. So I'll just ask you to. I think you're unmuted, Lizzie. Hello. Very quiet. Not better. Oh, you're still very quiet. Oh. Sorry, do you want me to read the messages? I've, I've just come across the first message which said no sound. I presume there was sound. That, that, that was me not unmuting you, Anna, I think, at the beginning. All right, <laughs> that's good. Technical incompetence. <laughs> that's all right, just as long as everyone did hear me. Um, so, I'm kind of sitting up. I have four times 10 month olds and two eight year olds. Should I feed them hay over winter? They would either all need to have it or none as I can't separate them out. That's quite a good question because I think it's, you know, it's difficult to manage those sort of situations where you've got um, different age groups where your youngsters are gonna have a slightly higher requirement. I think I'd be tempted, although it's going to depend on the condition of the eight year olds, to maybe use some hay in the winter. I think you're unlikely to be able to go to fully hay as you might do if it was just the youngsters. Um, perhaps go to 50 50. And if the youngsters are needing, more you're more likely to use something like a conditioning balancer to just give them that bit extra because they've still got a reasonable portion of their diet made up with straw i think that's probably the best way of doing it but it will depend a little bit on how each of them the older ones and then the younger ones are looking weight wise um, would you recommend sugar beet? I have mules and they are not keen on straw chop unless it's molassed. Yeah, I mean, that's that's um, an interesting question as well. Um, I think in most cases are um, probably the same for horses as well, really. They are going to prefer things that are sugary. I, I prefer things that are sugary. Um, so it can be a little bit of a struggle, particularly at times of year where the grass is tasting quite sweet. I think it's what we're giving them in comparison to what to what else is available. So you might find that they would eat an unmolassed straw chop in the winter where they're relying more on straw and the grass isn't tasting as good. Um, whether we'd recommend sugar beet. If you need a little bit just to sort of wet the feed and that's enough to encourage them, you'd need very little dry weight to just flavour something that's better for them. And so if you make it very dilute and go for the unmolassed 
options, then um, I'd say you can probably get away with it, but it's going to need to be quite limited, assuming that you're not needing any extra weight gain. Um, I thought the feeling barley and wheat straw was better as opposed to oat straw due to a difference in NSC variants, even in straw types. Just wondering why you are not suggesting wheat straw. So wheat straw can certainly be used for donkeys um, if you can source it, first of all, um, and if you've got good enough dental function. It's just... Um, can be more coarse and um, difficult for donkeys to chew. So for the youngsters mm -hmm. and older donkeys, it tends not to be my first choice. Um, usually barley would, would be the way to go, um, but oat straw potentially can be more calorific compared to other straws, um, but it's going to depend a little bit on the situation and how they're looking. But yes, you can use wheat straw as long as teeth are good. Um, garlic supplements are the in thing for horses and fly repellents. Can donkeys not have garlic granules? Um, as far as I understand, um, I don't know of, a, of donkeys not being able to have garlic actually. That's not something that I can answer. Um, I don't think there's good evidence to suggest that it's going to be beneficial from the point of view of um, fly repellents. Um, but from the horse side of things, a small amount um, tends to do no harm. What reason for not feeding haylage to donkeys? What about sugar beet or horse and pony nuts? So haylage often is more can be more nutritious than hay. It depends on the type of hay that we're comparing it to, of course, because you can get higher fiber, lower nutritional value haylage, and you can get very high sugar, rye grass type sort of hay that you'd maybe feed to racehorses. So it does depend on which you're comparing within those types of forage. Um, when we're going for hay, because remember that usually we would go for straw for donkeys, when we're going for hay, we would go for a meadow hay that's ideally late cut, so it is lower sugar. Um, so haylage, we generally avoid. Um, haylage can be quite high sugar. Um, if you're getting good, um, consistent um, haylage that's made by reputable companies, you're more likely to get a consistent um, analysis and they, you can get haylage that's maybe suitable for sort of laminitics and high fibre options. And it might be that in certain circumstances with a donkey with issues, we could use one of those. Um, some haylage that's more like a wrapped hay that's quite high dry matter can actually be quite high sugar when it's not well fermented. So we've just got to be a bit careful with, with what we're doing. But generally, as we wouldn't even feed hay to most donkeys, it generally would not even go there with haylage. We've talked about sugar beet already. Horse and pony nuts. The issue really is just that you need to feed quite a large amount to get the vitamins and minerals needed. So um, they're designed for feeding a horse or pony um, at a rate of maybe like a round stub scoop, up to two stub scoops a day, depending on the product use, it, it varies. So usually it's going to end up in an oversupply of calories to get the vitamins and, and minerals. So we're better off using um, a balancer or a, even a vitamin and mineral supplement really than a compound feed like a horse and pony nut. Um, but please keep asking. The stocking rate for donkeys is two per acre. If you had six on two acres, would you still do restricted grazing in spring and summer? I think the answer with how much we need to restrict is going to depend a little bit on um, how those individuals are looking. 
Um, so I think it's difficult to sort of put exact figures on it on sort of the area um, because weather conditions and, and the type of grass is going to alter as well. So what's available could be different at different times of year. So that's quite it's quite difficult to answer. But I think you've got to look at them, look at um, how what's in the field as well and um, if the field looks quite bare i'd also keep an eye on the edges of the field so um if the grass is looking quite green around the edges but the field that they're in when you've got a few of them is quite bare it's because they're going to be eating what's coming through so um just be careful with um sort of underestimating how much grass is actually there for them um, my two-year-old Jenny is kept with two 17-year-old geldings who are overweight. How can I best control the feeding for all of them? Um, that's going to, again, I said it's a little bit like the question earlier, where it would depend a little on your two-year-old Jenny's condition. Um, I think by the time you're getting to about two, although it would depend on her size, you'll probably be okay to use ad lib straw and restricted grazing feed your two that are overweight on a very limited hard feed something like the donkey forage balancer where you're going to get the vitamins and minerals and and little extra um, and then if your younger jenny needed more condition in the next year or so you could use a conditioning balancer to just make up that difference but I suspect um, particularly as we head into to spring your two-year-old would probably do quite well anyway because growth is going to be slowing down so it will depend on condition and um, any of these specific questions if you want if you do want a more detailed answer um, do give us a ring on um, our helpline and we can chat through the whole situation with how each of them are looking because I'll be able to give a much more detailed advice for you. So how much treats, apples, chopped carrot per day for a mini donkey? Again, that's going to depend on how they're looking. If they're obese, they're laminitic, we're really keeping everything very strict to try and get weight loss then it's going to need to be very little to none, maybe like a carrot a day maximum for maybe encouraging a bit of browsing or sort of rummaging through their straw. Um, and that's probably going to be the case for most healthy donkeys because they're so prone to weight gain. But um, if they can afford some extra calories, if, you're a, if you've got a really good area for them that they don't have lots of grass, you'll probably be able to allow a little bit more without issue, but it's going to depend on the individual. Um, what do you recommend feeding straw in? On the floor or in a wooden crate? Generally, just on the floor would be absolutely fine. They quite like just sort of foraging through the straw that's available to them. So I think it's quite nice to allow them to do that. Um, but equally, if they're just going to trash it and um, go to the toilet on it, um, then it might be better to separate some so they have got some clean straw to still be able to, to eat. So again, depends on the situation, but I'd say it's sort of on the floor is probably going to be fine for most. Um, is grass over the winter months, so October to March, still too rich to allow a normal overweight um, donkey ad lib access to or is it poor enough quality then so that's going to depend on the weather a lot um i think this winter we've had a funny old winter in that it was very mild um for a long time and it's only quite recently that we've started with the really cold weather so that's meant that grass has been growing still in in most areas really and so that means that for an overweight donkey i think i would still restrict access and um, if they're not overweight you may be able to be a bit more relaxed about it 
if they've had laminitis, we still need to be really careful or if they've got Cushing's and, and a high risk of laminitis, so maybe if they're overweight as well, um, we would still need to be careful when we get to the very cold weather and frosts. Um, I'm not sure how many of you sort of deal with um, horses and ponies that have issues with laminitis and if you've had issues with your donkeys in fact over winter but there's been a real increase reported by vets and, and that we've been speaking to on our helpline of laminitis with this recent cold weather and um, the issue is that when the temperature is very low so below five degrees c the grass isn't growing at that point um, but when it's sunny it still photosynthesizes so um, it can produce sugar but not use it up so it stores it and so actually that can be a risk time usually frosts because that's when it's sunny and very cold um, but really any time that the temperature is below five degrees c and and sunny so um, whether we can allow be a bit more relaxed about the grass will depend on other issues like laminitis um, and, and what the weather's doing really. Um, I feed straw in an old bath otherwise they trample it into the mud. Yeah <laughs> um, I think that's exactly right so um, oh, sorry I've just skipped a load of questions okay um i think that's a good suggestion if you're having issues that they are just trampling it then i would restrict it into into an area the only issue with that is if you've got multiple donkeys you need to make sure that they all do have access or put in another sort of feeding station that they can all get around um, is being on a dry lot or having less consistent access to grass an issue? There seems to be so many differing views between 24-7 access to grass and providing restricted access or keeping indoors and just providing dry forage. Is track grazing or free access to small grass areas every day best rather than time limited and scoffing? Um, yeah, I mean, you're right that um, I'm not sure that research has been done with donkeys specifically, um, and it has been done with ponies that showed that um, when turnout was limited just by time, that actually ponies ate quicker um, and so ate nearly their whole daily ration in just a few hours of turnout. So we have got to be really careful when we're limiting grazing in that way. Um, we don't tend to sort of muzzle donkeys either, it's not recommended. And so it's difficult to restrict what's available in that time um, if we are just limiting by time. So I would say that you're right, that that is an issue to just turn out for a short period. We do need to also limit what's there if they're going out for short periods. So whether that's by stri strip grazing or a track, um, you may find, find in some situations that having sort of free access to kind of come and go onto a dry area with some shelter, out into the field as long as there's not that much there is the best way for the group that you've got and I think it's very much going to vary depending on the needs of the individuals in that group and again you're right where you mentioned is it weather dependent because the weather's going to influence what they're getting from the grass um, so again I think it's worth talking about a lot of these things on an individual basis according to requirements. Um, with obese donkeys can you use a muzzle? I've covered that. Um, it's, just, it's not recommended really and um, certainly the donkey sanctuary advise against using muzzles for, for donkeys so I wouldn't, wouldn't suggest doing that. Um, when out walking and letting them browse are they sensible in what they eat? I don't know all plants and worry about what they are eating. Yeah, I mean, I'd be a bit careful from, from that point of view. Um, they do self-select a little with some brows, but I don't think I'd rely on them for eating what 
you know, deciding what's poisonous and what isn't. I think it would depend a little bit on what the plant is, because some poisonous plants taste horrendous and, and they they just wouldn't go there but I would never guarantee that at all I think it's better to check things out um, you can get some apps now I think that you can just take a little photo and they can tell you what something is so it might be worth just um, using something like that just to be on the safe side um, how do you transition from winter to spring as grazing starts so um yeah, that's very weather dependent because we can have spring at different times of, of year, really. Sometimes it's very early if it's been mild and um, sometimes it's late when we end up with a March that we're just all covered in snow. Um, so it is going to be a little bit weather dependent. The transition is going to depend on what's available to you, really, um, and how they've been kept over winter i.e have they been going in the field have they had sort of no turnout have they just been on sort of a dry lot which is sometimes necessary because of sort of wet fields so it's going to depend a little bit on the facilities also what grass is available and and what options do you have for restricting it because the longer that you leave access to grass the more and more is going to be available once you finally do turn them out if you're avoiding it so um if they've had no turnout i would always introduce it gradually um if I was managing a laminitic for example we would just build up say sort of 10 minutes at each end of the day is 10 minutes sort of twice a day when you're there to maybe muck out and gradually build up the time that they're out but of course we have got to factor in um their meeting quicker so it will depend on how they're looking condition wise when we start that transition but any change in diet does need to be made gradually over at least sort of five days but with grass and hay and straw that's such a massive part of their diet compared to sort of hard feed often i'll make those changes a bit more gradually over sort of two week periods and if we're building up from sort of no grass up to a full day out i do it over an even longer period of time that i build it up because um that's much more of a significant change um, we live in a very rural area, completely surrounded by fields and hedges. If we take the donkeys for a walk locally, will they know if the hedges are not good? Oh, same sort of question. So, yeah, it's better to check out that they're not eating anything that they shouldn't. I know um, none of us would forgive ourselves if they ate anything that, that they shouldn't. And some things um, can be really deadly to them. So um, I would check things out but great if you can get them out to, to exercise as well because that's really good for them mentally and for keeping on top of their weight what would you feed a fit donkey that's driven three to four times a week to maintain condition and provide any energy if required so i'd firstly base the diet on hay largely um, it's going to depend a little bit on how they're maintaining their weight in the work that they're doing um, but if we base the diet on hay because that's going to give them more nutrition to start with so more calories more protein we can then use a product like a conditioning balancer it's going to give them the vitamins and minerals that they need and more protein to help with sort of muscle um, function and repair and um, support their their um, energy requirements we may not need anything extra to that depending on how they're looking but as long as we're using sort of low starch and sugar options we can use sort of uh conditioning or higher energy feeds but we're looking at those with highly digestible fibers and oils as their energy source um i have to say i've um don't come across many people that we're managing those in very hard work that we ever need to feed the higher calorie and energy cubes um, so again sort of discussing the individual requirements is probably a good option and um, if they're doing a lot we're going to want to potentially add extra salt to their feed as well as just access to a salt lick
we have the 13 hand mule. Do you recommend a more donkey type diet rather than a pony diet? Also, is there a condition chart for mules? So um, in, in many cases, I'll manage them um, as I've described for um, the donkeys. But it would depend a little bit on on what you're doing with your mule and um, they can be in a little bit more exercise than some donkeys. So I think it's going to depend on on the situation. Only if they could afford extra calories could you go down the route of something like a horse and pony nut that we've discussed previously. Um, and a lot of mules do tend to still be quite prone to weight gain unless they're doing quite a lot of work. So um, generally I would manage them on the same sort of regime as we've discussed. Um, but if you had particular questions about your own donkey that had high requirements, then um, do give us a call and we can discuss through that. Um, is there a condition chart for mules? Um, I'm not sure whether there is actually. I think it's worth um, talking to the donkey sanctuary whether there is specifically. I know they've got um, one for donkeys. I'd be surprised if they didn't also cover something for mules um, but that's worth checking I'm actually not not sure I think you said that a donkey eats 1.8 percent of its body weight um, so my maths is good oh no you're gonna make me do mental arithmetic um, but is that around three and a half kilos for a 200 kilo donkey yeah so I'm checking this on my calculator because um, it's, it's going to make sure that I don't make any mistakes. <laughs> but you're right in your in your calculations, in which case it's not much weight wise. Is it if it includes grass, which I expect it does? Yeah. So that daily intake does include grass, but that intake is on a dry matter basis. So actually, because grass is quite high water content, they will be able to to eat more of that than they would be able to eat straw if um, not as far as putting weight on, but for the amount of, of getting that sort of level of dry weight. Um, I would recommend mostly straw. Um, however, if they're prone to weight gain, and I'm not sure if that makes sense, but yeah, they their appetite is generally more limited than than horses and ponies. Um, so you're right that we're going for around three and a half kilos. Um, but every every donkey is an individual. If they're eating more, um, they're not putting on too much weight. And what you're offering is ad lib straw, then I'd be quite happy with them eating a bit more straw as long as they're not putting on too much weight. Where we've got to be careful is, is if we're using high calorie forage sources. We have quite wet land and we also keep sheep. I've read that this could cause an issue for liver fluke in donkeys. The sheep are treated. Is there something I could give the donkeys for this? Can I just jump in there and say that we are going to be running another one of these sessions um, with another Anna. <laughs> um, and we'll be covering worming and other parasites. So um, we'll leave that one for anybody next. here. Watch this space and we'll be publicising that sometime in the future. Excellent. So we've still got quite a few. I hope um, everyone's still um, hanging on in there. Um, my donkeys sometimes cry even when they all, when all they need is that they're trying for, uh, I'm not sure I understand that question. My donkeys, when they, Um, sorry, I don't understand your um, question, Jocelyn. Um, maybe rewrite something if uh, it might be a comment, I think, and not actually a question. Um, somebody else is just off that says thank you. Um, I give a small handful of horse and pony cubes to my donkeys when I fetch them in just to encourage them. Is this too much for them? No, I mean, a handful is going to is a very small amount. Um, if you are really struggling with keeping their weight down, then I'd maybe consider it in their regime of being careful. But um, 
in the great scheme of things, it's not contributing a huge amount of extra calories. Now, it, you could use, because you're going to need to give something that gives them their vitamins and minerals to balance that, because a handful of cubes isn't giving them the full recommended level, you could replace that with something like the Donkey Forage Balancer, and um, you're encouraging them in with what they're actually needing to balance their diet. But I'd say a handful of cubes extra to a balancer is probably not going to be um, a problem unless there's an issue. But look out for some cubes can be a bit higher in sugar and starch or contain cereal grains. So um, most kind of basic low value cubes like that wouldn't, but just be careful and maybe have a look at the label. And if you're unsure, just um, give us a ring. We can always um, go through a label with you and just um double check whether everything's okay um something if i could send um there's just a question this is sent to me directly would you feed um mollage half dry along with the nuts or dampen down to stop any chance of choke yeah that's a good question because i didn't cover that at all and i would recommend dampening any feed um, so you're absolutely right um, for some particularly those with dental issues I'd end up soaking the feed um, but for the majority with good teeth literally just dampening it is is the best option but I wouldn't feed things dry so that's a really good point um, to maintain a donkey with Cushing's is there anything that can be added to feeds or any minerals and nutrients that are more important to them or if anything should be avoided so the main thing with Cushing's um, is the risk of laminitis. Um, it can go hand in hand with insulin dysregulation and laminitis is a higher risk when their insulin is not working properly. So the main thing is keeping the sugar and starch low, which we have to do with, with all of our donkeys anyway then we're reacting to how they're looking so some donkeys with Cushing's are more prone to weight loss so maybe as they're getting older maybe we've got dental issues as well so we're really managing the other things that are going alongside it but a donkey with early Cushing's would potentially just be managed as I described for um, sort of good doer donkeys where we make sure they've got a high level of vitamins and minerals. Some of those micronutrients in something like the donkey forage balancer will support the immune system and that's something that can be affected by Cushing's. Um, but the main things are we, we're giving those vitamins and minerals in a feed that's low sugar and starch. We're using forage sources that are low sugar. Um, so really, we're managing in the way that we've already described, but perhaps doing a bit more for condition as the as time goes on. We've got to make sure that they don't ever do too well, though, because of their risk of laminitis. Sometimes if they become fussy, um, we would be really careful with the kind of sugary things that encourage them um, and try and use the, the things that I mentioned that were a bit better for them. Um, but if you ever had a donkey that had become fussy or had any problems with Cushing's, it's best to talk um, directly. We have two overweight Shetlands living with our two donkeys. Would barley straw be OK for them all to have? So. Um, Yes, potentially that's that's OK. The issue with your Shetlands really is that ideally they shouldn't have ad lib straw. So straw shouldn't be a horse or pony's only forage source because it can lead to ulcers. Um, it, donkeys do very well on it. They obviously um, sort of evolve for much lower nutritional value forage. So I'd be careful in that situation. But if they're out with them, that would tell me that they've probably got a bit of grass as well. So I think you'll be fine for um, restricted grass access, but with straw available, because straw can make up sort of 25, maximum 50% in a um, horse or pony's ration. Um, I help with a group of donkeys that age from four to 23. Is feeding barley straw and haylage too much feed for them in winter? So um, 
again, it's going to depend on the quality of the haylage and it's going to depend on each of those individuals. So I think it's worth some of these situations kind of talking in more detail, really, because you might get away with that situation, but there might be the odd one of them that a younger, healthy one that really ought to be just having straw and not be not having the haylage introduced in winter because they're so much more prone to weight gain. So um, it's probably best to manage the kind of group situations where we go through each of them individually and chat about their requirements, then what's available to you and what we can do about it. Um, ah, so, um, this is just going over Jocelyn's uh, message again, that they bray even though they have all that they need. Are they just trying for a bit more? Yeah, I mean, donkeys aren't stupid, are they? You all all know they're far cleverer than um, most horses and ponies are. So I think on the whole, it's sort of learned that they can get attention um, and try and get a little bit more out of you but if you're confident that they've got the forage that they need um, so they can satisfy their requirement for plenty of fibre um, then I think they're probably just asking you to give them a little bit extra something nice um, but we don't need to fall for it. <laughs> Uh, oh gosh sorry I've just flicked past a couple um interesting I'm hoping the rescues this summer excellent one question back a while that was about which herbs are okay to give donkeys to calm them down all right okay um so I mean, there are various karmas um, on the market, some herbal, um, some other sort of just nutritional supplements, um, and many of which can be suitable for donkeys. I think it's best to sort of contact the individual sort of companies directly. Um, certain, certainly our top spec karma could be used if it was if it was needed and um, it's not very often that we do we do need it so it's perhaps worth having a discussion about the situation and maybe the underlying um, contributing factors to try and manage that as well as looking at adding any additional supplements in. Um, oh, it's flicked right back to the top sorry I'm gonna have to scroll right down again. think that's just about it unless we've got any extras and we're now at just gone nine o'clock oh yeah perfect okay. lovely if you're happy that I haven't missed anyone <laughs> I don't think so um can I just say on behalf of everybody Anna thank you I've had donkeys nearly 30 years and I found that absolutely fascinating good Excellent. can I also thank Tom Bysouth for doing all the hard work sending out a thousand and one emails to everybody so thank you Tom to everybody that's still on here, um, two things really. We've recorded this and I will be finding a way to put it on both the Donkey Breed Society website and also hopefully the Donkey Breed Society Facebook group. So you should be able to access that and we are happy for you to freely share that because we are all, edu all about educating people. <coughs> um, we also, um, as a society, will be running lots more of these on anything and everything that we can think of. So please watch this space, particularly on that Donkey Breed Society Facebook page. Um, and as Anna said, and thank you again, Anna, um, please get in touch with Anna at Top Spec for more personalised information. So on that note, I'll close the meeting. Thank you, everybody, for attending. Please post your comments wherever you've seen this and I hope you've all got plenty from it and have enjoyed it. Thank you Anna. All right no problem thanks. Thank